Okay, this is an ultrasound study of a patient complaining of uh, severe pain in the region of the right hypochondrium and uh, radiating to the epigastric region for the last few days. Now this is the uterus. She is married and the uterus is normal in size. This is the endometrial canal. This is the urinary bladder of the right side. When I move the probe transversely, I do see fluid posterior to the uterus. Let's magnify. Now this black line below the uterus in transverse section. This is the uterus, and this black area is the fluid posterior to the uterus in transverse section. And uh, not only this, we do see uh, a sac-shaped structure in the region of the right adenex. Now, this is uh, a suspicious sac. I do not have the beta ICG level of pregnancy test with me. So, it measures 13 millimeters. 13 millimeters cystic area surrounded by an ecogenic rim, irregular lobe, and this is the uterus in transverse section. This is the endometrial canal. We also see Now here again you see that uh, this is the uterus in transverse section, this is the endometrial canal, the urinary bladder, and this is the right adenexa, in which you can see a sac-like structure with internal echoes. Now let's magnify it to be more uh, accurate. And again you see that uh, this is a cystic area surrounded by an ecogenic rim, and these are the echoes. Uh, which are fixed almost, uh, I don't see any movement in this uh, area and there is small amount of fluid posterior to this sac as well as we see fluid rim posterior to the uterus in the section. I'm going to magnify this sac shaped structure and let's study the sac only. Now we do see uh, the ecogenic uh, linear area attached with the interior wall. This is the Peter Fold measuring. If this is a gestational sac, this is a Peter Fold. Now, there are two possibilities in this patient. Number one, I'll go benign because I do not have the uh, pregnancy test of the patient. The patient is illiterate. And uh, thus I will now. I, uh, that first of all, now I am going to give a sweep to the probe, 80 degrees, and you will see that there is no significant change in the shape of the cystic area. This this is the area. This cystic area. This one with an ecogenic <coughs> linear area within it. This ecogenic area. Sorry, this cystic area surrounded by an ecogenic rim. This is, you see, it, it, it does not change its shape when I change the position of the proof. You will see it again. Okay. Here we are back. In the section. So this uh, does not change its shape. And another important thing is we don't see posterior wall acoustic enhancement. There is no strong back wall. Now these, actually, uh, now if you do not have any uh, lab profile with you, a uh, relevant lab profile, then first of all, I in my mind will go that this is a case of ectopic pregnancy in the right tube, erupted tube, and this is the fetal pole, this is the gestational sac, and this uh, with uh, definitely bleed around and as we see the fluid not, not only posterior to the 
the cystic area, which longitudinally view, we also see view posterior to the uterus. There we are again to see. This is the uterus and this is the view. It can be bleed. This will be bleed if this is a gestational sac. Other possibility uh, will be a ruptured ovarian cyst, uh, sorry, uh, a torsion of the ovarian cyst, which is uh, most, there can be also a possibility. So, if I freeze the probe, I freeze the image in this region. Here we are seeing, now this is the uterus in transverse section. This is the endometrial canal. This is the region of the right adenexa, cystic area, an uh, ecogenic linear structure hanging from its anterior wall, broken, irregular, thick and thin, uh, ecogenic rim around the cystic area, and no posterior wall acoustic enhancement does not change its shape. And uh, this is the case of uh, today. That is a topic pregnancy versus for univariant cysts. Thank you.